Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and today I'm excited. This is a video highly requested by so many of you and by myself because I have to know about it. So let's talk about the, like, one of the current just what's in the spongel area. This is the Juno & Co Microfiber Velvet Sponge. Uh, Nikki Tutorials did like a whole video on this. She was like, oh my god, I love the coverage. It's so beautiful. It works so great. I look so airbrushed, blah, 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 right? And I'm sitting there as like a basic bitch, and I'm kind of like thinking to myself, like, girl, I love you. You're talented. Like, she is insanely good at makeup, but like, she ain't got nothing to cover. So like extra coverage to her and extra coverage to me, they ain't going to be the same thing. So I wanted to grab this sponge myself. I wanted to test it out. I want to see if I'm really going to get some extra coverage out of this. Am I really going to look airbrushed? Because yet again, that girl doesn't have texture or hardly anything to cover. Me, on the other hand, I got lots of texture and I got lots of stuff to cover for days. So I'm very excited about this, you guys. This is a $6 sponge. Like, let's, come on now, six bucks. I'm... Like, there's everything about this is right, and if memory serves, I don't know what the code is, but I think they even gave her a code for this sponge, so you can save, like, a percentage. So it'll even be, like, less than $6. I died a little. Anyways, it is $6. I'm on their website right now, and I'm going to read a little bit about it. It says, meet this microfiber velvet blah, 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 sponge. If you're looking for a more natural airbrushed foundation finish, the Juno Microfiber Velvet Sponge is your go-to. Made with velvet soft microfiber bristles and a slanted edge for control stippling, the Juno Microfiber Velvet Sponge provides buildable coverage fast. Okay, that they need to like shorten that name down because it's kind of giving me a headache. Um, it says that you can use it wet or dry. Wet it, squeeze it, stipple it. Perfect for liquid foundations, concealers, and contouring when it's wet. Um, if it's dry, it says dip it, tap it, pat it. Perfect for powder, bronzers, blush, and highlights. So again, I do have one that is damp right here and then one that is dry in the bag, as you can tell. And I figured, honestly, you guys, we're just going to hang out. We're going to play with this sponge. I have my Fenty Contour sticks right here. The shade Amber is probably the one we're going to be using. Obviously, foundation can concealer, and I also have, never have I played with before, the Natasha Denona Star Palette, so I'm very excited about this. I have been holding on to all of these cream products. You guys know I haven't been, like, delving into the world of cream products much because I'm an oily girl, and then finally, you guys, okay, I need to talk while I work. I'll get into that in a second, so let's go ahead, move you guys in, and let's start this. I already primed with the Tatcha Silk Canvas, and now I'm gonna pick out a foundation. Oh, I love this part. And you know what, just for fun, by the way, I'm also going to throw on some of the Becca Skin Love Glow Essence. I did a full video on this, the Becca, the blurring foundation, all of that. I can link it right up here. Uh, but I am going to grab some of this too, because why not? It smells delicious. Yet again, this is the Cucumber Melony stuff, and it really is beautiful. So I'm just going to rub this in with my hands and then pick out my foundation. Oh, yeah. Now, just because I apparently love to shamelessly plug myself, we are going to use the Clarins Skin Illusion Serum Foundation. I did a review on this, I will link it right up here. Now, the reason I'm picking this foundation is A, the coverage on it is not super high. Like, it is buildable to medium coverage, but right from the beginning, this will be a really, really good foundation for us to tell how the coverage looks with this sponge. Is it different than with my other sponge? Yada, yada, yada. Plus, I've used it recently. Like, I've used this actually a lot recently, so I'm very familiar with what it looks like, how it feels. And the third reason, and like a really good reason that I'm picking this foundation, fun fact, it is a beautiful foundation. It looks great on my face. However, my texture is not really like lessened with this foundation. It's actually almost, I don't want to say emphasized, but it really just doesn't help my texture in any way. So again, if this sponge is going to do a good job with lessening texture and building coverage, I just feel like all around this will be a really good foundation for that. So this is the shade 100.5 cream. This is their lightest shade. So I'm just going to grab a couple dabbles of this on the back of the hand here, and we're going to go in and we're just gonna see if it's any good. And actually, you know what, before I do this, let me pull out the dry one that I have in here, because I wanna see how much bigger it got. Oh, shnikes. So this one is obviously wet, we have the dry guy right here, oh my god. So it's like mommy and daddy. Um, now, wow, that. but it's so soft, and this is like the weirdest thing. It feels dry. But like it's wet but like it feels dry. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so let's just go ahead. I just went ahead and dabbed some on the flat side right here. And I guess we're just going to go in and kind of see how everything looks. Um, oh, no. Uh, uh. Oh my God. 
Is anybody else seeing this coverage? Go back and watch my Clarence video if you do not believe me when I tell you that that coverage is like double. Okay. Calm down, Paige. Don't get excited. Oh my gosh. Like, that's one layer. What? I'm gonna zoom you guys in really obnoxiously close because I want you to see the the product from the Clarence. It's actually sitting like on top of the microfiber bristles. It's not like, um, what's the word? Not absolving. It's not absorbing. There we go. Into the sponge at all. So that's probably why the coverage is so good. Oh my gosh. Earlier I was telling you guys, I haven't really like dabbled much into the cream product world. And here's the thing, A, because I'm oily skinned, I've always been like really nervous about cream products because they say like, oh, oily skinned people, like you're not supposed to wear these or you're not supposed to do this. And then the other week, like something happened and ever since I have not given two shits about like what you're supposed to do as an oily skinned person. And I was just like, you know what, actually I'm gonna find out what I like. And so I'm glad that I'm doing this video because I want to find out, like, do I like these cream products or do I really not like them? But at the same time, I'm just like, you know what? This is a lesson we all need to learn. We don't need to care about what people tell us we can and can't do. Like, find out for yourself. And I'm excited to be finding out for myself. And I know that it's just makeup and it's not like that serious, but I feel like it applies to so many other things in your life. Like, no, I'm going to find out if I like the way that these look or not. Okay, so let's talk texture real quick, and then we're going to move on to concealer. My face looks quite smooth. Now, it's not super smooth, it's not glass, it's not porcelain, but the texture that I have is probably reduced by, like, I would say a solid... I'm going to say it's reduced by about 30 to 40%, which is pretty significant for me because I have such a textured ass face. So that's, that's really good. Now let's go ahead and grab some of my Born This Way concealer and we're going to use this. Now I'm going to apply a lot less than I normally would just because they say, I'm assuming that a little bit is going to go a lot longer. So, okay, why, how about we spread that out? So I'm thinking a lot less hopefully does go a lot farther under the eye. So I'm taking this, I'm using that same precision point right there and I'm just going to blend this all out oh wow I feel like we're officially at that part where I have to move you guys out a little bit otherwise you won't be able to see anything I'm doing oh my gosh you guys that coverage is so stinking nice oh my gosh and it blends like down my cheeks so beautifully and I'm just gonna take like the little bit that's left over dabble it in the center of my forehead and down my nose like what is going on? I just used, I would easily, I'm and I'm, this is like easily. That was probably for one eye, about a third of the concealer I would normally use. And it looks exactly the same as it normally would. Oh, just taking a little bit now and I'm going to run it on the other areas of my face. Like I like to do just to help reshape those areas a little bit. I, I'm absolutely stunned right now. This video is just going to be me going, wow, the coverage looks so, 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 so damn beautiful. Now, before I go in and set the under eye, I want to try some cream products. So I'm just going to let those get funky. They'll probably get creasy. It's not a big deal. My under eyes do that all the time. And honestly, you guys, life's not that serious. Like, don't worry about it. If your under eyes get creasy before you have a chance to set them, just repat them out. Don't have a heart attack. Now we're going to grab the shade Amber. This is one of the Fenty matchsticks. This is a really nice contour shade for my skin tone because it's really really cool tone and I'm just gonna grab like literally the tiniest amount and I'm gonna start way back here bam on both sides and I just want to see how this blends out this contour stick and I'm going to I think I'm just gonna flip it around and probably use the butt for this part I just want to blend it out see how it works we're not moving the foundation, so that's good. And I went in with like such a small amount just to see what it would do. And it looks like it didn't pick up any product at all of that brown shade or that deep amber shade. And it just looks really like naturally diffused. Like you can see a really natural looking shadow right in there. I'm going to grab just a little bit more. Bam. I'm just going to buff that out. And I'm mainly pressing and then kind of wiggling the brush. So I'm kind of like popping on top of it and then just going offset from that line just a little bit. Just enough that I'm diffusing the color, but I don't want to move it all over the place. I still want to keep it right in that general area. 
Ooh, it's just like a really nice light shadowed effect. So it's nothing too crazy. That's really pretty, like really pretty. Do I want to take just a little bit of it and run it like on the sides? Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit before we move on to blush. I'm not going to do it on like, well, maybe I'll do a little bit. No, I'm not going to do it on my nose. I lied. I'm just going to take it and run it along the edges of my face just so that way that one area of contour, that one area of shadow doesn't look like crazy alone. And I'm just kind of lightly kind of dabbling this. I'm not pulling or swiping because that'll remove my foundation underneath. So I'm just lightly dabbling everything. I've had issues before where it looks really, really harsh, like the line is just ridiculous. And what I like about this sponge is that it really makes it a very soft transition. Like you can barely see a shadowed effect, which is good if that's like the look you're going for. You're going for a nice diffused look. I think it's a good thing. Um, if you're looking for a more harsh line, you'll probably want to stick to like a regular brush or something like that. But as far as like a nice subtle transition, I think that you guys can see it's very like whoo, airbrushed. Okay, whoo, girl is having like a hot flash right now from hell. Oh girl, okay. Whew, calm down, cause now it's time for Natasha the no no. Oh my god, I love Natasha. Oh. And this is the 01 De La palette. It is their diamond and blush. Like look at how big and beautiful and sexy. <gasps> and look at the big mirror and then look at all the colors. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Now, these three are right here behind this case. These three are the cream products, and then these are obviously the regular powder products. Oh, my God. Okay, I just I just stuck all my fingers in them. I'm really excited about this. So, now I want to grab... I'm going to take the wet sponge still, the nice damp sponge, which doesn't feel damp, which is crazy. Um, and I want to grab... I think I want to grab this middle shade right here and I want to, I'm just going to, I guess, dip like the butt end into it really lightly. Okay. You can see there's a little bit of pink on there. I just don't want to overdo it because I don't know what this is going to look like. I'm just going to kind of take it on the apples on my cheeks and like stamp. Oh girl, you pretty. I'm going to just kind of stamp it around. Now I'm going to flip it over and use the other end or the other side, the flat edge right here that had no product on it. I'm just going to bounce that all over the place diffuse it oh my gosh can you see how pretty that is like is that showing you on camera oh my god oh girl like is that this just so soft looking i am so shocked right now i know i shouldn't be this shocked because like i mean obviously there's something good about it oh hello that's a little bit <laughs> page let's let's blend that out shall we um i don't know why i'm so shocked like so many people have already been like oh this is so great but I'm such a skeptic. <laughs> okay, so now, just before I set my under eye, all of that, you know I have to try this diamond shade right here. Behind the glow case, it's like a highlight, I guess. And it looks really pretty. I'm going to take it flat edge here, still using the same flat edge. I don't care. They kept saying like, oh, you have to rotate it. You have to do this. And I'm like, no, I don't. I will use whatever shade I have available to me or whatever side. And we're just going to call it a day. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, you guys couldn't even see that. I'm sorry. Wow, okay, wow, okay, okay. Paige, calm down. That is a really, really light, and I do mean light-ass shimmer in this palette, um, but it's really pretty for like a natural flush to the cheek. The only thing I don't like is that I'm not loving the thick texture that it has. And I'm also not loving the fact that it doesn't want to blend as well as the blush did. Actually, I should move you guys a little bit farther out because I think you'd be able to see things a little bit nicer. There, I think that that gives you a little bit better of an idea. Like, it, you can't see the texture, but you can see that it does give, like, a beautiful sheen. I just wish that the texture of it wasn't so thick. But that has nothing to do with the sponge, so move on, Paige. Oh, my God. I don't know how this sponge can take a thicker product that normally would be just like thickening and getting all weird and like gunky on my face you know like that thick slimy that's what this is kind of doing but like somehow the sponge when i use it to pat out it like diffuses it and it doesn't do that on my skin it is the weirdest thing it is catching a little bit in my texture but again i don't think that that's the sponge i think that that's just the product 
Wow, dang you guys. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of a transition. We're going to switch over to the dry sponge and we're going to try playing around with some powders. Now, the first powder we're going to play around with and probably the main powder is the Maybelline Fit Me. This is 05 Fair. This is what I use to set my under eyes and like all the concealer areas of my face. This is my diehard favorite powder right now. I'm obsessed. If you've been here for a hot minute, you know it. And I want to take the dry sponge and use it on my under eye. So I'm going to go in one last time with the damp sponge, pat out the under eye. And now I'm going to go in with the dry sponge on the slanted side. And I'm going to press that powder up into that under eye. And see, for me, this step is kind of weird because I do not ever use a dry sponge with powder. And so it feels really hard. Like this sponge, when it's not damp, it is a little brick. And I'm curious to know how in the hell this could possibly be good when it's dry. Dry sponges are not for this kind of thing, are they? I mean, unless there's something I missed. There's probably so many of you that are like, um, actually, I use dry sponges all the time. Oh my god, like, see, part of my deal is I'm so lazy, I would never use a dry sponge because I would have a, a wet sponge. And, like, I'm lazy, I'm gonna use a wet sponge. I do notice the other one didn't pick up like hardly anything and like reserve it in the sponge but this one as it's dry it is picking up like a little layer of powder that's not on the surface that's like tucked inside the microfibers a little bit different but okay just something to point out okay but seriously why do my under eyes look smooth what is this is not there's voodoo in here somewhere tell me ya witchcraft this is just such a hard can you hear that like it's so hard <laughs> <laughs> the other one you couldn't hear at all and this one that is not the case okay i have to try this just because like my curiosity will not be satisfied until i do i'm gonna go in with the damp sponge just like i normally would and i'm gonna apply this uh, powder to like my forehead and all that just to see how it looks because here's my thing a i don't think it's practical for people to have like two sponges like oh this one i wet and this one i don't that's weird number one number two why wouldn't it work with a damp sponge? Like, I want reasons. I want names. I want information, okay? And this is looking real. See, I like this. I like it better with a damp, with the damp sponge, not with the dry sponge. And now, just because I am super duper oily, I do set the other areas of my face. I'm going to set them, like, really, really lightly for the purposes of today, obviously, because we did go in and kind of do a little bit of light color underneath with the cream products. But just so you know, I am oily, so you girls gotta set the face. There's no option here. Um, now, I want to try, speaking of, the dry sponge with the powder products. So, I'm gonna grab a bronzer. And I'm thinking, let's keep it consistent here. Let's go princess cut. I use this one all the time. And I will try it on the dry one first, just because they said to give it a shot. So, I'm going to. I'm gonna grab princess cut. Oh, that picked up about four. 400 times as much product as I could ever use. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, okay, let's dust this off real quick. Let me grab a brush to dust off my this, whatever, whatever I call this, my sponge. Like it picked up an obnoxious amount of product. That's a little bit less. So let's go ahead and kind of stamp this on here and then very lightly kind of blend it out. These things pick up, like this thing dry picks up copious amounts of product. Like, you cannot, you cannot. Ooh, that actually looks really pretty. Before I continue over here, I'm gonna grab the wet one and I'm gonna try the Princess Cut Shade a little bit on the other side of the face. See, the other one also doesn't pick up as much product. The damp one doesn't. Like, it doesn't pick up nearly as much, so I feel like you have 10 times the amount of control with this one. I know it looks like a lot on camera, but it's not. Like, it's literally less than half. And it diffuses so easily. Like, what is going on? Girl, I don't know, but my face is going to look so bronze by the time this is done. They're going to be like, girl, you a statue? You a bronze statue? And I'm going to be like, yes, actually, queen, I am. Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be mean or nothing, but I do not like this with the dry sponge. I've done all the steps with the dry sponge, and I'm not a fan. 
So just so you know, I don't recommend the dry sponge. Okay, so I'm going to grab out of the Natasha Denona palette, I want to grab this Glow Extreme right here. It's a little bit like way too peachy pink for me, but I want to see if I can tone it down by using this damp one and maybe just, you know, see if I have any control with the sponge. Because what I find is that sponges do a beautiful job of airbrushing. They do a beautiful job at dispersing product, at doing all of these things, which is great. But at the end of the day, if you can't use it like a brush and really really lessen the blow of the product, then I still can't recommend it. So I took a very, very light amount. I'm just going to lightly kind of dabble it onto my face. And I'm sorry, it looks so pretty. And we are also, by the way, fun fact in case you couldn't guess, we're going to use my reshaping as well from the Park Ave Princess palette. And we're going to reshape the under eye. We're going to see if it works for that. Because seriously, right now, from what I'm seeing, the value of this sponge only keeps increasing. Like, can you imagine? Picture it, like Sicily, 1775 or whatever, but not really. You go to like a hotel room or whatever, and you're like, oh shit, I forgot this brush. But now you have this sponge with you. This sponge, I have not used one brush to do my face. This, this sponge has literally done everything. I mean, other than my eyes. But like, it's done everything and it looks so nice. And I was able to go in with that blush and disperse it and move it around and like create the flushed cheeks of my dreams. Like, look at how nice those look. Oh my God. I'm obsessed. Now, before I go in with highlight, I'm going to go in, like I said, with that reshaping powder from my Park Ave Princess palette right here. I always take my beauty blender. It is always damp. And I go in with these two shades on the end. I gather up a nice amount of product. And these are what I use to always reshape my face. I go in under the eye, I pat it around and I take it anywhere that I want to for one last kind of go around that I want to bring forward. Center of the forehead, all the concealered areas, get a little bit of it just to help really pop that area, give it a little extra color and a lot more dimension. Oh God. And it does such a good, like look at that, I'm sorry. It just does such a good job. I'm gonna grab this shade from the palette, the Natasha Denona palette, and I'm gonna take it yet again on this damp ass sponge. And by the way, all of these products, they've all just like layered on top of here. I keep moving it around, but they've all worked really well on top of each other. I haven't had any issues with like transfer. I'm just gonna take this and pop it. Okay, that is a sad fucking highlight. I don't want that. Nope, give me a good highlight. Get out of here. Go away. Next. Okay, so guys, for highlight, I'm going to do something so original, something I've never done before. And I'm going to grab my um, Ofer Nikki Tutorials Glaze Donut that I've never used ever. And um, sarcasm, it runs deep. And I'm going to pick it up on this sponge right here, and we're going to just go in and like, oh, shit. Okay. So now we're really going to test that sponge, girl. Are you versatile? Can you blend that big patch of highlight? Can you help me, please? Oh, okay. wait a second. Actually, okay. That actually, like, no no joke, that diffused that highlight beautifully. I'm impressed. Wow. This is the most intense highlight I own. It's like the most intense highlight on the market. It's like a straight white highlight, and it is so difficult. When you, like, over-apply this highlight, you know, because it is ridiculous, and that sponge just like took away all of the overdue, spread it out, made my whole cheek look glowy, and it looks beautiful. How? How is that even possible? So I don't know that I would use the sponge for a highlight just because I like to control my highlight a little bit better than this. But like if you like having that mineralized, um, like the skin finish look from MAC, that really glowy skin look, I would definitely say take this sponge and like run it over those areas. And it really just diffuses whatever you go in with and gives like a beautiful glow to the whole cheek. But like, oh, look at that. Oh my God. Okay, guys, real quick, let me go ahead. I'm going to let all of this sink in, spray my face. I'm going to gather my thoughts on this, charge my battery for a minute because it's almost dead, throw on mascara, lashes, all that good stuff, and I will be back to give you all my thoughts on this sponge, you guys, and what I think about it, so hang tight, and I will be right back. Okay, you guys, here's the deal. I got all of my makeup finished on my face, all of that good stuff, and I really want to finish up my thoughts on this sponge because this is one of those things where I feel like so many people could like flood the market, and oh my God, it's so great, blah, blah, blah. And I am not going to ever tell you guys a product is great and it's so amazing just because everyone else is. So I really wanted to take my time. I sat down. I made like a pro and con list in my head. 
I grabbed my phone. I started to list out a couple of things. I waited about 25-ish minutes just to see how my texture ended up settling out because as I told you with this foundation, texture can be an issue. So I really wanted to like give you guys my actual thoughts on this and not just like, oh, it's good. It's good. I went through every product and now we're going to go through them real quick again and we are going to go through what I think on how I think this sponge should best be used. So let's go ahead and let's start with foundation. I actually, where's my mirror? I'm going to give you like like a current to date opinion. Um, I actually do think that it does help with texture. Now here's my thing. We're going to stop at texture real quick. I feel like this sponge might help something apply smoother, but just remember that as it wears throughout the day, this sponge won't necessarily have a bearing on how the foundation helps your texture later. And I think that that's a really important differentiation. Differ, differ, yeah, it's really important to differentiate that because just because something looks good in the moment doesn't always mean it will look good later on. So if you pick this sponge up and you're like, oh, it's so smooth, but then in three hours it looks like it normally looks, don't be alarmed because yet again, it's still that foundation that ultimately has to wear on your texture and not the sponge. So as far as in application, it did apply very smooth. Now what I will say is that because this sponge did allow my foundation to go down really, really smooth, I feel like that also set the groundwork for all of my other products to go on very smooth as well, which does make a big difference. So the foundation went on nice and smooth, the contour, the blush, the highlight, all of those cream products, they went on really nice and smooth. And then my concealer went on even smoother than normal, which that is naturally a very nice smooth concealer on me. But then when I went in with my Maybelline Fit Me Powder, I do feel like it was even smoother and somehow it was even pressed nicer into the skin, if that's even possible. And everything did have a much smoother effect. So I think all of those steps combined really did help my foundation to look smoother overall. Like it looks so nice on camera. I'm really impressed. On camera, real life, all that good stuff. Now that brings us to concealer. I feel like if you do use this sponge, you definitely might want to cut down on your concealer, which is funny because how many of you are yelling, G Page, we've wanted you to cut down on concealer all along. I hear you. And it's actually like this sponge is a really good tool for that. If you find yourself over applying products, concealer, whatever, I would definitely say pick this up. I think it will save you money in the long run just for the amount of product that you will not be using, whether it be foundation or concealer. This was really, really great for my concealer. I didn't see any problems with it at all. Now, coverage-wise, let's talk coverage foundation. I did feel like I got a little extra coverage out of this, which, impressive. I don't completely understand the dynamics of how that worked, but I do feel like I'm not going to say it took, you know, a medium coverage and made it full coverage, but I do think that it took a product and added probably 30% more coverage to it, which is very substantial, especially for this, which is like a more serum type foundation. Okay, so now I want to talk about this sponge in relation to everything else. So cream or regular. First of all, cream. I do feel like this blended out the cream products really, really nicely. I think that it went on, it helped them apply really smooth, and it actually helped helped diffuse like a bad texture in that Natasha Denona one. It was a really thick, like, I just, I did not care for that texture. And I know that had this been a regular beauty sponge, I think it would have just stripped my foundation and been done. But I feel like this sponge did a really nice job of pressing that texture into the skin enough that it just melted with my foundation instead of stripping my foundation. I feel like this though did a really nice job kind of assisting them a little bit more so they didn't get caught up in the texture and then just rebuke themselves right off your face. So for that purpose, I really like them. Now, here's what I think, and this goes for both cream and powder products. I think that this was good. I just don't think that it was great. Main, main like reason behind that being... <sighs> I had a hunch, okay, and I'm just being honest with you guys. I'm sitting here, I turned the camera off, and I was like, you know what, I need to go look at myself somewhere else. So I grabbed my mirror, my sponge, and I went out to three different windows. I wanted to see myself in all natural, natural and created, and then another window at the end of the house, just to see how everything really looked. Because for me, I'm thinking like, there's just something off about this. And I knew it, because I can't quite see myself in the viewfinder, but when I kept grabbing the mirror, I couldn't get like the shading and the shadowing that I was looking for. Here's the thing. You guys might have had a difficult time or a more difficult time seeing it on camera. I had to go in when the camera was off with a brush and actually add more bronzer and more blush because this does diffuse it and lighten it and kind of dispense it and, and diffuse it, I think I said diffuse twice, in such a way that it almost makes it 
natural makeup. So no matter how much I was going in with, I went in with that bronzer. I thought I actually went in with too much. And then I left these lights and I could, I barely had any bronzer on. Same with my blush. And what I think is beautiful about this product is that it does sheer those out. Like that is great. However, if that's not necessarily the look you're going for, I would stick with a brush for those. Now that does bring me to the last and final thing, which was highlight. And you guys, highlight for me was difficult because yet again, I believe and I love like on my face, a really concentrated, nice, sharp moment up here. You can see it. I went in with a brush and I really got that look because that is like my go-to favorite look with any highlight. Um, this, this right here, so beautiful if you want like an all over sheen if you want to really diffuse your highlight if you want a glowy face like right now i could zoom you guys in and it would look so glowy right through here like you can see how beautiful and how like nice and shiny all of this is it looks so good on camera and it looks so beautiful and diffused and great and like just transient all over my entire face right like you can really see it which is so nice about this product. But again, I couldn't get this, that nice just pop right there and the pop right there and then the pop in the center. I was not able to get those like really distinct, sexy features with this sponge that I really, really love. <laughs> and I know that everything I said is honestly personal preference right there. Like those are all 100% me. You don't have to listen to them. If you prefer a natural makeup look, you could use this beginning to end, no problem, and it will work so good. And the one last thing that I do want to talk about before I wrap this whole thing up and this is just something that like I know some of you would care some of you would not care the packaging is so like eco-friendly and so good for this product like let's talk real quick I actually pulled a couple of examples because you know me um, now imagine this one on a smaller scale this is a real techniques this is the complexion sponge so yes this one is quite larger than their normal one but their other sponge does come in a very similar container it's just a little bit smaller it's about yay tall um, but all this like really hard dense plastic blah 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 um, and it comes with all of this cumbersome packaging that's not necessary same with the morphe sponge like that little sponge is in there just rolling around all this extra packaging that you do not need and then you see this one and look at it shows up in this great little freaking bag overall like i'm just so impressed with how nice and like like look at how much like this little tiny bit of packaging yes i'm hoping that we can get to a day where you need even less packaging than that for a sponge However, I understand like they want it to have something to keep it safe from like getting super squished and stuff. Um, I do want to also mention real quick, aside from their packaging, which is stellar, um, I ordered these sponges and I'm not exaggerating even one moment. I ordered these like on a Saturday, I want to say, and they were here Monday. I didn't pay extra shipping. I don't know. Literally, physically, I do not know how these got here so quickly, but they were on top of their shipping game like nobody's business. I received them so fast. Like, to order something on the weekend and have it Monday was just like crazy to me. And I live in Northern Michigan, so that doesn't happen. I'm curious if any of you have tried them. I wanna know if anybody else was like that or if I got a fluke, but you guys, shipping was so good. The products are really nice. I am so, so, so impressed all around. I do love this. I think it is so good and so worth your $6. Like, so worth it. Definitely give it a try. I wanna know what you guys think down below. Um, and also, while you're down there in the comments, go back up, description box. All my social medias, they're right in there. You should check those out too. Mainly Instagram and Twitter, because you know that's where this girl is at but other than that you guys i love this sponge i'm happy i'm having a good day and i'm like i'm getting really frustrated because everything around me is like going to hell in a handbasket my camera my batteries my sim card it's like so many things are happening but i am still choosing to be happy and grateful and i love you guys all so much and my channel has been booming thank you all so much you guys have been making my channel climb and climb i don't know if you are sharing it i don't know what you're doing but please keep doing it you guys are so great and you guys make me love putting out content for you. If you're new here, I, I have oily skin. Um, I have a brain tumor and I put out new content every uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah, Monday through Friday, five days a week. Monday is always like something vloggy or something more personal. And then Tuesday through Friday, we do like fun makeup stuff. We test new products. We look at all the new releases and I just love doing it with you guys. So thank you all so, so much for making this so worth it to me. Your comments and your love and how sweet you are, you don't even know how much it means to me. Like there are days where I'm hitting rock bottom and I hear from you guys and it just... It makes my heart happy. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please do not forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!
My face looks so dramatic today And I put my hair up and I'm looking so cute And I played with this fun new sponge And I like it and I like it and I like it I like my sponge <laughs> Oh my god, what a day I'm having I look so red <laughs> Like, what is going on? Okay, life, thanks for that <laughs> Appreciate it Sounds like a giant just ripped ass Sounds good, it's good noise but this is the Juno and Co. Microfiber Fiber My Fiber Fiber. Um, but here's my thing with this palette or with this. Oh shit! I hit the mic. <laughs> that was probably really loud. 